Shut up, shut up. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. And for today's video, I am very excited to film my demo and review of the Profusion Jurassic Park collection. Uh, so I've already uploaded a few reels to Instagram and I think one short to YouTube. I'm also going to recut the Instagram reels and upload those because if you didn't know, YouTube has separate lengths that you can upload as a short versus Instagram, uh, which is annoying. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I did those reels of me unboxing and swatching the collection, so I can refer you to those for the kind of in-depth uh, look at everything. Uh, but I wanted to actually apply the products to the face. And uh, because I've already kind of played around with some of these products before, I have some kind of initial thoughts. Uh, and expectations, I guess you could say. So we'll see how things go throughout this video, and of course I'll give you my final thoughts at the end, and I will have timestamps down below in case uh, you'd like to jump ahead. But I thought I would start off this video by showing you some other items I picked up from Profusion recently uh, that weren't featured in those reels. Uh, so as you may know, uh, Profusion initially released a Jurassic World collection, which is the newer set of movies that have come out. Uh, and I didn't initially pick up anything from that collection because because it didn't have that like nostalgia feel for me and in general I think they did a better job with the Jurassic Park just in terms of using the IP. Uh, but I did go ahead and purchase the mirror from the Jurassic World collection. Uh, so this one has this, I'm guessing Velociraptor claw attached to it and it says Clever Girl on the actual mirror. And I'm not as familiar with Jurassic World as I am Jurassic Park. I know Clever Girl was a feature of the original movie, and I'm guessing they did a callback in the Jurassic World series, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so I got that, and I also got the egg blenders. Uh, these were the two items that just seemed the most interesting out of everything. And I'll give you my overarching take on this collection, which is if you are a big fan of Jurassic Park and you like to collect things like this then I think it is I think it's really well done uh, but if you just are interested in the performance of the makeup I'm not sure that this is the collection for you uh, but anyway it comes with sponges like so this is a pretty hefty sponge this is a beauty blender that I used earlier just for reference so quite a bit bigger uh, that was the dry sponge uh, and then it also has this little egg case that has, I guess, the Velociraptor eye on one side and it says Perfusion Cosmetics and has the logo. So this one has a smaller sponge with the logo again. I'm not sure why they printed it that way. Uh, and this one also has an angled side. So uh, I already did my base makeup, if you couldn't tell. So I don't think I'm going to use any of these sponges I'm showing you, but I thought I would just quickly show you that and give you my general thoughts about the two collections. I think the mirror and the sponges are both are both sold out at the moment. So I got those two Jurassic World items. Uh, I also got, I picked up another couple items just because they looked fun. I got this unicorn face brush uh, that they put out. So I just picked that up for, for fun. And then I remember when this collection came out, but I'd never picked up anything. So this is the like cactus sponge. Uh, so I just thought that looked really cute and interesting. I kind of collect sponges like that. And then this is a recent um, launch that has nothing to do with Jurassic Park, but it looked interesting. Uh, so they put out these like five pan eyeshadow palettes and I think these are only like $6 a piece. Uh, so there's the Wild Hot Spring and these have a very tiny mirror on the inside, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and if you're not aware, you can purchase items from the Profusion website or uh, they also carry Profusion at Walmart. So if you want to go onto Walmart and if there's a specific item uh, you'd like to uh, check out, I, I think they have like a store finder. Uh, but this one is Wilderness Explorer. Let me know if you'd like to see a review about these. Uh, this is Desert Stargazing, which might be one of my favorites. Scenic Lake. So I picked up all of the palettes in this collection. That's a really pretty color story with that periwinkle. 
Canyon Oasis, which looks like so. There is a plastic sheet covering the shadows that's taped on, I think, so just if you are curious about that. And then the last one here is Mountain Trail. So that is the last one. They all have this kind of marbled shade in the middle. So I got those. I think those are a kind of new launch. And I also picked up a new item that's kind of in my, I don't know, wheelhouse of products I like to try. So these are the West Coast Glow Radiant Liquid Bronzers. And uh, I went ahead and picked up all four shades. So I'll go ahead and swatch those for you in a moment. Uh, but we have the shades Malibu, uh, Newport, La Jolla, I think that is, and Catalina. Uh, so I'll swatch those for you in a moment and of course apply them to the face, or apply one anyway. And then the last thing here, I, th I think this was a freebie gift with purchase that they threw in. This is the Lips to Go with a matte lip cream, matte lip liner, and sparkling lip topper in Ambitious maybe is the shade. I'm not sure if I'll use this or if I'll hand it on to a friend. Oh, it says thank you for your purchase on the back. So, so nice kind of unexpected little treat in there, but obviously the focus of the video is going to be on the Jurassic Park collection. And I managed to purchase all of those items in store at Walmart. Uh, I looked online and I found a Walmart that was like 45 minutes away, so we drove out there but that walmart also happened to be near the closest crumble location crumble cookies uh, so i finally finally tried the brand and i told my husband like i'm glad i was able to try them and the cookies were good but i probably wouldn't drive 45 minutes just for those cookies in the future uh, so like i said there are four shades of this and i believe yeah so these retail for six dollars a piece i think perfusion might also be sold at cvs and possibly walgreens but i know walmart for sure carries it and one thing about perfusion's packaging that i do appreciate even though it's kind of annoying once you get the products home is that everything is uh, taped shut so you kind of have to uh, cut that so you know in the store whether something has been tampered with which can happen even at like Sephora but I think the drugstore especially is susceptible to people just going in so uh, so anyway so these are the four shades of this product and I'm going to start with this because I'm at the stage of the makeup where I would typically apply this kind of product uh, so this is the shade La Jolla and I thought it was interesting. They have a very kind of unique applicator. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a really flat foam doe foot. And it says you twist. Oh, wow. Okay, so you can see it just it kind of just started coming out the top. If you're familiar with like the Charlotte Tilbury, um, when you first get that product, it kind of comes out of a kind of circular sponge evenly. Uh, so that's interesting. So that's La Jolla. I'm not sure which of these is supposed to be next, but I'll start off with Malibu. So I guess once you use it a couple times, the product gets kind of distributed, if you can see that, but I feel like it's a little bit of a flaw with the packaging. Uh, so this one is Newport. Yeah, I can't get over that. All right, so I think I managed to kind of swatch these. It looks like Malibu so far is the most cool toned so I feel like that's the one I might go with especially since the the Jurassic Park collection has those liquid bronzers uh, and this is Catalina this is the darkest one and that is super dark so maybe not deep enough for the deepest of skin tones but I think it's a decent range so even though Malibu is not the lightest shade I think I'll use that shade because it is more cool toned and I want more of a contoured look from this product, even though it's called a liquid bronzer. So before we get into that, I guess I should go ahead and outfit myself appropriately. Uh, you can see I have my denim shirt on, uh, but I do want to grab the headband from this little set. And I saw Teresa's Dead um, review this collection, and she said that this fanny pack, belt bag, whatever you want to call it, uh, did not work on her. Uh, I am about a size 14, I would say, and I was able to get this around my waist when it was fully extended. 
So just in case you want to actually wear the thing. Uh, but yeah, this is a uh, red bandana headband and hopefully I can get this to stay on. It does feel very soft and stretchy. I guess if nothing else, I could just leave it on my neck, but I think that's decent enough. We'll see. I, I don't always have tremendous luck with this style of headband anyway. Uh, and just to quickly go through the rest of the items in this before I kind of set it aside. So it has that um, front pocket. This is all clear, fluorescent yellow. And the other items are uh, the highlighter, which I might use later. This is a metallic, or they say mini chrome liner, so I might use that. Uh, they have this item, which is kind of random and doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, so this is just a plastic case with nothing in it really. So it's like that. And I agree with Teresa, like it would have made a lot more sense if they'd made this into a compact mirror. I understand as a drugstore brand, they're trying to keep things at a certain price point, but I think that would have made a lot more sense, especially if it were magnetic, that would have been really nice. And it would have been nice if they'd also included some kind of lanyard to put this on because otherwise it's just like a hole. Uh, and my other critique, I guess, is that the reason they're doing this collection is it's the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. Uh, June 11th, 1993 was when it was released, I think. And it would have been really nice if this collection also came out around that time in June. Um, instead, it came out in July. And there could have been like production issues or whatever that pushed it back a little bit, but it would have been cool if they kind of tied in with the uh, release date. Uh, and the last item here, um, are these little, it says glow in the dark gems. So I don't plan on applying these, but you know, it's cool that they kind of put them around the uh, dinosaur like that. So that was the other item. And then I did want to also start using this mirror, which says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Uh, which is really cool. I think this is a standard, I'm pretty sure this is just a standard like 1X display or whatever. So I guess it would have been nice if they made this like 2X or 3X just for that kind of added touch. Let me take off, I'm gonna destroy my nails. Yeah, pretty, pretty sure these are the same kind of resolution if you will. Uh, but yeah, I do appreciate that little touch. Uh, and then this has a little light up car. I'm not sure exactly what purpose that is supposed to serve unless you wanted to put it on a keychain or something. I guess it would be enough if you had it like looking into your purse or that kind of thing to find something. Uh, so anyway, there's that. Uh, so yeah, so I think now we are ready to start with the contour. So I said I was going to use Malibu. Uh, and just to quickly touch on, I guess, the other accessories that I won't be using, I do really love this uh, Bingo Dino DNA set. So this is one of my favorite things from the collection. Uh, you can see they have that JP30 uh, emblem on them for the collection. And this slides off and then it opens like so. So this again, as a collector's piece, I think is really great. Uh, I think I will be using the eyeshadow brushes later. And I'll quickly show you the other mirror. So this is really cool because it is supposed to look like the mosquito in amber. Again, I realize like cost constraints kind of limit what they can do with this. I just wish this felt a little bit more high end. Uh, I mean, it's a great idea and I love that, but yeah, I just, I don't know, wished it looked a little bit more expensive maybe. Uh, the other thing they have in here, which was a really nice touch, uh, they have two mosquitoes in amber. This one is also like a little sponge case and then it has the mosquito printed on the actual sponge, which is really cool. So I'm not going to be using it because I don't want to get it stained, uh, but I just wanted to show you that. Uh, and I think, again, just from a kind of you know, would you actually use this perspective? It would have been nice if they had some holes in the bottom uh, just to add to that kind of circulation and make sure your sponge doesn't get moldy. Um, but otherwise, I think, I mean, just the packaging alone on this is really great. So 
uh, yeah, I would would recommend if you see this picking it up and that's what the back looks like. So really, really nicely done. Like the, the ideas behind a lot of these products I think is top notch uh, and we'll, we'll talk about the makeup as we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply to make sure I get the right one. Okay, so Malibu and there's a little bit of product kind of on the brush. I feel like this is just going to be kind of a messy product. Like I just kind of, I guess, smoothed it out a little bit with my finger, trying to get an even application. So uh, I like to like contour under the jaw. So I think maybe we'll see how we do with that. And now I just clicked up a little bit more I mean, I guess it kind of smooths out itself as you apply it. I do like having a smaller applicator. So maybe maybe it's not as big a deal as I thought. And then just taking it a little bit down the nose. So, so far, so far not bad. So I'm gonna take a brush to blend that in. This is the BK101 and I think that blended pretty well. So not bad. I think I need to compare this to the e.l.f. contour. I'm thinking of filming just a, a reel or something, swatching all of the liquid contours in my collection. So I will definitely compare that. I mean, they, they label this as a bronzer, so maybe it's not fair to use it this way, but I think, I think that's not bad. Uh, from memory, the e.l.f. is a little bit more cool toned perhaps. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to try those out. Okay, so next up I have the bronzer. So uh, so these are cleverly named Dig Site 1 and Dig Site 2. Uh, the Dig Site 2 shade being deeper. And I think this is where I would say, even though I'm not totally convinced about this packaging, I'd say if you just want a good drugstore liquid bronzer, I would probably gravitate more towards these. Uh, especially since they are in the permanent line. These were also slightly more expensive at $8 as opposed to $6. Uh, so they just have like a really dinky little applicator. I mean, by themselves, they're really cute, but yeah, they're just, they're just a little dinky. So uh, I think I'll start off by maybe applying some of one. So, and that actually doesn't look too much different from. So that's Dig Site 1 next to Malibu. And actually the Dig Site 1 might be a little bit more cool toned. So you might not be surprised to hear that I'm not expecting this face of makeup to be the best I've ever done. And just from swatching these products. So that's Dig Site 2. Uh, and granted, I'm not super familiar with Profusion's makeup. I think Walmart put out a Halloween beauty box one year where uh, there was like a mini perfusion palette and I think I was decently impressed with the eyeshadows uh, but I haven't really tried much else so I think collections like this are interesting and the same is true for I guess ColourPop and that kind of thing too where the demographic the products are targeting might not have that kind of nostalgic feelings for the collection like I was I think about eight years old when this movie came out. And I don't know, I don't remember seeing it in theater. So I'd, I'd have to ask my mom if I ever saw it in theater or if I saw it later at home or whatever. But, but yeah, it's a movie I remember watching when I was growing up. And in general, it's just, it's kind of iconic. So yeah, so the, the makeup products themselves, and I don't know if this is a feature of Perfusion's makeup generally or just this collection, but the pigmentation levels seem more kind of like kid makeup than products like an adult would actually want to use. Okay, so next up we have the blush and these come in these really fun, these are like specimen jars or something. Uh, so it says, caution, viable embryos handle with extreme care. It would have been nice if they made these like the, the Barbasol can uh, that he takes with all the embryos in them. And I think we already have the egg shape, so it would have been nice if they were like maybe liquid blushes and little tubes. I think that would have been pretty easy. Uh, so that's, I guess, my 
my thoughts about that packaging. Uh, and as you'll see, like these colors, these blushes are not very pigmented. So these are lip and cheek balms and they're supposed to be color changing. Uh, so I'm just gonna use these on my face and I'm um, trying to preserve the little dinosaur that's embossed in there. Um, but yeah, as you can see in the swatch, so that is the Raptor shade, and then this is the Triceratops shade. Uh, so the Triceratops shade especially is very, very light. I'm just gonna apply this directly to the face, even though it's probably not the best idea. So there it looks like it's actually Apply it a little bit more. Just take this BK 109. You're making me a liar, Profusion. Yeah, I'm not sure how well that kind of blends with the bronzer and everything I have. I'm trying to apply it kind of towards the back part of the cheek, and I think you can see there is maybe a little bit of foundation or whatever picking up. In general, like cream products, the most foolproof way, especially if you're not familiar with the formula, is to um, take your brush and either pick up product from your hand, which I'm not sure how well that's going to pick up, or just pick it up from the component. And again, I'm trying to get it from the backside, <laughs> backside of the Triceratops. And I haven't powdered or anything except underneath my eyes. We'll see how everything kind of shakes up once I once I do that. But yeah, putting putting this Triceratops a little bit more kind of on the apples, just so you can kind of see both. Again, not, not my favorite formulation or anything, but I guess I was able to make it work. Okay, so now I think I will powder. And uh, I think the video going up before this is probably my house labs video. I'm just trying to think. I don't think I have any kind of um, like drugstore powder that's right here. Uh, so yeah, so I said I wanted to keep trying this one. And I do turn off the air conditioning to film, which generally makes me look a little flushed. And in all honesty, I also I uh, treated myself to some moe in honor of filming this video, if you remember that scene in the initial film. Hey, we were saving that. But today, I guarantee it. So any excuse, right? Okay, so the blush is actually kind of standing up decently well. I mean, it's definitely toned down. And I do have a very kind of natural uh, foundation on. I have the Revlon Skin Caring. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so now that we are powdered, I'll go in with some highlighter. Uh, so I think this is one of the few products from this collection that Teresa enjoys. So there's two highlighters. One is Jurassic Stomper and one is Missing T-Rex. Uh, and these are very reminiscent of the ColourPop Super Shock products. So, and they have that kind of swirled design to them. Uh, I did swatch these before. I think I'll apply one on one cheek and one on the other and then just kind of try to even them out. Uh, so I'm going to use my Anastasia A23 and it looks like it's more like flaking product off than actually getting product on. So yeah, I guess, I guess it got on the brush. Uh, so that was Jurassic Stomper. And then on the other cheek, I'll do Missing T-Rex. And this one is more of that green Kind of undertone it doesn't come off too green but so it definitely it does the trick and honestly i don't know I, I don't know if you really notice enough of a difference so that i feel like i have to even myself out so maybe i'll just leave them as is uh but yeah those are the highlighters those retail for six dollars uh, and the blushes were also $6. So I think I picked up every shade of everything, uh, but if you just wanted to pick and choose, you can definitely pick up a few pieces. I'd say my my recommendations are, are probably for items like this that are a little bit more kind of special, but uh, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about the lip balms. Uh, so there are three different shades and perhaps appropriately, they are all very kind of 90s brown. Uh, again, I swatched them as part of that reel. So these are the Hydrating Lip Plumps. 
uh, which scares me a little bit. Yeah, they do have menthol. Warning, discontinue use. If signs of rash or irritation appear, avoid swallowing. If irritation persists, consult your physician immediately. All right, that's always fun. Uh, but yeah, we have Clever Girl, we have Summer 1993, and we have Isla Nublar. So I don't know that it really matters all that much which of these I choose. Uh, I kind of want to use Clever Girl just for the name. I did swatch this one, right? It's not looking swatched. Maybe I messed up. All right, so making sure I get these swatches right. So from my pinky to my thumb, we have Clever Girl. This one's definitely pinker. Maybe I swatched two, two of the same. Uh, this one is Summer 1993 definitely more brown. And finally, Isla Nubar. Yeah, I mean, those those two are pretty close, but at least we have one pink in the mix. So that was my bad. Okay, so let's, let's do the Clever Girl, I think is the pinky one. Yeah, and these are not in any way close to at least the texture of the, of the Tarte um, products. I mean, the same kind of mechanism, but I don't, I don't really go for the Tarte plumping products anyway. But this formulation is much much stiffer. Makes me wonder if they could have uh, put these in a different packaging. So yeah, this is this is definitely not my favorite. And I mean, maybe going against what I said about these being for kids, this is probably not a product you want to give to children. I mean, I can feel it kind of start to start to feel a little spicy, let's say. Uh, I'm just looking for, yeah, it does have capsaicin. I mean, you either, you either like plumping products like this or you don't. I, I typically don't, but Anyway, it's a pretty color, a little, a little stiff, but it's pretty. Okay, so on to the eyes. Uh, so again, this is one of the best pieces of the collection. I think it's also one of the most expensive at $20. Uh, the visitor set with the fanny pack was 16 and the, this kit here was 16 as well. Uh, and this mirror was uh, $8. So yeah, I guess this is the priciest item, but you do get a 30 shade palette. And so love that reminds me of some of the old school. Shut up, shut up. Probably need to put a rubber band or something around. I did it. I didn't even open it. I've, I've been holding it. All right. Well, we'll see how often that happens. Uh, but yeah, these are the shades, and I do, I do love the the names that they chose. Unfortunately, they are just on that plastic uh, overleaf uh, and not printed. Uh, the pans are really small, and let's see. It's just like so. Yeah, you can, you can fully uh, remove it if you want. Uh, but yeah, I will keep that for reference and just for the cute factor. Uh, and then we do have some embossing as well, which I will do my best not to uh, damage. So I'm not really sure how I want to do this. Yeah, and some of, you can see some of the pans, like they're not all uniform. Like that JP is not the same kind of orientation as that JP. So not, not a big deal, but just something to note. Uh, and of course, it's going to be a little difficult to do this without being able to hold this mirror and this one doesn't have a mirror. So uh, I guess I'll zoom in a tad for this portion. And I'm going to, I guess, start off with that cream shade in the upper corner and that's kind of the pigment level that we're talking about. Uh, this is the shade Science is Real. I used a hair clip to hopefully keep it shut. So hopefully that does the trick. Uh, so Science is Real. I already primed and set my lids. It looks like this one might actually have some shimmer in it, which I thought was just matte. I'm not going to swatch all of these shades because we'd be here all day. Uh, and then going into, these names crack me up. So I'll just, I'll quickly read these um, going from left to right, top to bottom. 
We have Science is Real, Paleobotanist, Electrified Fence, Where's the Goat, Land Speed 32 miles per hour, Welcome to Jurassic Park, and then the next row, We Spared No Expense, Brachiosaurus, Amber Mine, Jurassic Park Visitor, Island Nublar, Dilophosaurus. The third row is Run! <laughs> Exclamation mark. Clever Girl. Uh, she's uh, Tenacious. Summer 1993. Bingo! Dino DNA. I kind of just want to use shades that are fun to say. Uh, must Go Faster. The fourth uh, row is Hold On To Your Butts. You Didn't Say The Magic Word. Tyrannosaurus Rex. We Are Being Hunted. Triceratops. Stay In The Car. And the last one is Life Finds a Way, Velociraptor, Security Clearance, Missing T-Rex, Galimimus, and Raptor Trainer. Okay, so that, that's a lot of fun. I'm going to use Where's the Goat on a Sonia G uh, Classic Crease Brush. So, so far, nothing crazy here. So taking that same Where's the Goat shade underneath. I used, by the way, that new Makeup Forever concealer, the reformulated one, and so far, I don't think it looks great. I think there are some shades in this palette that do seem a bit repetitive, so I think I think they could have curated this color story a little bit more and maybe given you a little bit more product per shade. Generally, I'm good with having less product, but in this case, it does seem like it could use a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to use, I guess, Triceratops, and yeah, not not wowing me with the pigment. I think it's probably going to be suitable for a beginner or someone who's not totally comfortable. Pretty, but not not the most pigmented, or I guess the pigmentation level that I would expect from a shade that looks that pigmented or that deep in the pan. Using the same classic crease without any more product. I really need to clean my brushes. That's what I need. Okay, so taking a dry brush, I'm going to go into Bingo Dino DNA, which is in that interesting shape there. It's interesting because most of the shades, most of the shimmer shades are in that footprint. But there is that one in the top row that's just in a circle, so I'm not sure if there was a reason reason for that. And yeah, this pan size especially, it's, it's kind of hard to get your brush into it, so this is a dry, dry brush. And there is, there is some fallout, as you can see. So I think I'm going to try that same brush and I'm going to spray it with some MAC Fix Plus. So definitely picked up more product. It does have a pretty kind of blue reflect. It doesn't seem to be falling out. All right, that was my fault. It doesn't seem to be falling out as much with the wet brush. Really want to try this shade right here. That one is called Jurassic Park Visitor. Same brush. Again, nothing nothing crazy in terms of the pigmentation here. And because the pans are small, like you really can't fit a finger in there to kind of pick up product. So I feel like that reads mostly just as sparkle. Like there's not much underlying color there. Let's see if I can get any on my finger. Okay, so may maybe they're kind of doing themselves a disservice here with the pan size and shape. Because I think if you're able to kind of get in there, you're likely to have more, more success. And I know Teresa, I think she tried a more colorful look. So you can check out her video to see. All right, so maybe this first one I tried is just not, it's more of a topper. I'm gonna try to go into this deeper purple called Tyrannosaurus Rex, my finger. Again, I can't remember if Teresa said she tried the purples or not. So I think this more kind of taupey gold shade maybe has a little bit more promise than the purple ones. All right, so I think I'll leave it there for the palette. I think I gave it a good, a good shot. All right, enough of that. <laughs> it's fun though. I mean, if, if you like to collect fun things like that, um, 
then maybe that's something you'd like to look into. Okay, so I'm going to, I think, try that metallic liner, which is right here. Not my favorite style of eyeliner, but uh, the fluorescent ones, I just, I don't think are really going to show up. And I don't know that this totally meshes with this eye look, but kind of blends in. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this, this brush is probably the kind of applicator that you want to go in when you need like super precise liner. Like if you have an all matte eye, I feel like it's a little hard to control. This eyebrow always wants to act up. Okay. So that's, that's the liner. Uh, and if you didn't see the real, those are what the other liners look like. I guess I'll take the purple one. So they all have two sides. They have a traditional liner side and then they have like a stamp that has one of those um, emblems on it. I just wish that, oh, I forgot to use my, I just realized I forgot to use these eyeshadow brushes. My bad, that wasn't intentional. Uh, so just to quickly go over those, we have a kind of stiff packing brush. I think these are all synthetic. The, the handles feel a little a little cheap, um, but I do appreciate that they try to go with this like amber style um, plastic and they do have like a very tiny logo on one side and it says perfusion on the other. Uh, so you get that, you get this like fluffier kind of blender, like pinched blender. And then you get this like fluffier blender, which I'm not sure how much good that would actually do you. Uh, and they do, they're kind of pokey on the bottom. Like not so much that I think it would be a hazard, but just so you know. Okay, so going back to this liner. So this one is the Dilophosaurus, I think. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna do lashes yet, I might. Uh, but yeah, that one has like this side. It's actually, it's not bad, it's magenta. It's just, it's not going to show up over something like this, I don't think. Uh, and then it has this little, that's kind of cute. So let's stick this. You could do, you could do little, here, let's have fun. You could do little uh, tracks. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's that one. And then the Brachiosaurus is, those are probably teeth, right? And then this is an eye, the Velociraptor, like so. And the Apatosaurus is like a lightning bolt. And finally the Tyrannosaurus, those look like claw marks. A lot of, a lot of fun you can have with these. I'm not sure how much you know, everyday use you'll get out of them. Kind of want to see what happens if I just try, try a little bit of a wing. Obviously not taking it over the eye, so. Yeah, I think it kind of just looks weird now, doesn't it? They are, I think, felt. I mean, I get what they are going for. It would have been nice if they'd thrown maybe black or brown in the mix. I mean, there's certainly enough black and brown in the, the movie. That's a look. All right, so yeah, that's the liner. Those are $6 each. So again, you can have you can have some fun with those. I'm wondering if when I swatched these initially, like the pigment hadn't fully come into kind of the brush. I think they are looking a little bit more opaque now. One thing to be careful with these though, is that if you press in too hard, you can kind of see the the outline, like the circle on the outside. I'm not sure how the yellow would show up on a deeper skin tone, but for my skin tone anyway, it kind of gets lost a little bit. So those are all the swatches there, and you can see the one next to the purple, the coral kind of shade, what I was talking about there. The yellow and the green, I'm not sure if you would really get enough kind of dimension to really kind of see what's going on, but still, it's, it's fun, it's different, and they're, actually pretty pretty blush proof really not bad profusion so i just took some i think normal micellar water on a cotton and it did come off just in case you were wondering uh so i think i'm going to apply some mascara 
And then we'll talk about the lashes and the setting spray. So I'll just quickly use my Clinique bottom lash. Okay, so mascara is on. I used my Lights Camera Splashes. And I think I, think I wanna try some of these lashes. We have to, right? Uh, so I think I'm gonna go with, they have three sets here. Kind of more natural, a more dramatic black, and then the, the ones with the green. I think I wanna do green. Uh, and it does include some specially branded lash adhesive, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I guess I'll try that. Surprisingly, this headband has kind of stayed in my hair. I don't jinx myself. So, and it looks like the two more dramatic styles, if you can see that, have a black band and the lighter style has a clear band. And it looks like there is a tapered end here. That bronze shade is kind of growing on me. It's a shame, shame it's so difficult to use. All right, so I think I'm gonna wanna cut off that outer two knots worth. Okay, so how do I use this? Oh, this is weird. It's like in a pen. So I think this is something you're supposed to apply to your actual lash line, which doesn't really sound like something I want to attempt, to be honest. So I'm going to hunt for a normal lash glue. Okay, so I, I spared you all watching me uh, try to apply these, and I did also uh, try to apply some of that Moira liquid liner to the inner area of the eye, just to kind of I don't know, help it blend in and my eyes started watering and it, it got a little bit kind of murky in there, but I think with the overall way the eye looks, it doesn't actually look bad. So I think, I think the green lashes are fun. I think I would say having that band does make it a little bit more difficult to apply. And I'm by no means like an expert when it comes to applying false lashes. So uh, you can take that for what it's worth, but yeah, these, these green lashes are quite fun. Uh, I use the Duo Lash Glue um, for what it's worth, the one with vitamins. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we're having fun, right? Uh, and the very last item is one that I'm a little, a little scared of. Uh, so this is the, uh, perhaps with good reason, the Dilophosaurus Spray. It's a mineral setting spray. And again, probably not the best thing to apply when I already have runny eyes, but uh, yeah, so this um, lifts up like so, and it says clever girls rule the earth. So I like that kind of 3D effect. My biggest issue with this, and what I find a little misleading, is that they call this a mineral SPF 30 setting spray, uh, but it's not a mineral SPF. They have uh, homosalate 3.9%, octocrylene 3.9%, and butyl meth methoxy di whatever. There's another sunscreen that's like 2.8%. So not a mineral sunscreen. And I don't know if there's a way to make a mineral spray sunscreen. Uh, I know you can have like mineral powders and that kind of thing. But anyway, this is what this looks like. And I'm going to spray my face with it, which is probably a huge mistake. Uh, when I sprayed it for the real uh, it does just smell like straight up alcohol <laughs> because the first ingredient is alcohol. Uh, it also has fragrance, but really I just got the smell of the alcohol. At uh, the very end, it does have uh, vitamin E and sodium hyaluronate, but I'm not sure how much good those skincare ingredients are going to do when you've sprayed your face with just straight up alcohol. So here goes nothing. I feel like now I'm smelling a little bit more of the fragrance. It is a nice compact little spray and I saw I saw there was like one drop. So obviously I'm not going to test out the longevity. If you don't have an issue with chemical sunscreens or alcohol-based setting sprays, then you might you might like that product. Now that I smell it, it does it does smell nice, just kind of lightly floral, like a floral sunscreen maybe. Yeah, it says do not use on damage to broken skin. I don't know, not, not my type of product, but it might appeal to you. Uh, so that is everything from this collection. Let me know what you guys thought, if you have picked up anything and what you think of it, if you think it's going to become a regular part of your routine or if it's more of a novelty. So as I said at the beginning, for me, this collection is, is more about the novelty and the nostalgia than the actual performance, but uh, hopefully I've given you enough information throughout the course of this video so that uh, you can decide whether this collection is right for you. But even though I probably won't reach for these products, 
uh, as makeup items in the future. I had a lot of fun uh, with this collection and just trying everything out. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. <laughs> Don't get eaten by a dinosaur. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.